Hello, my name is Joe Schember. I'm mayor of the city of Erie. Welcome to our local government panel. I am really happy to play a role in the 2021 Youth Civic Engagement Symposium. I grew up in Erie and I'm passionate about our region. My hope is that you share similar feelings and will consider contributing your time and talents to our community. There are lots of ways to do that. You can vote, volunteer, run for public office, and work in the public sector like I do. Your voice is important. You are the future of Erie. Now here's my background. I graduated from St. Mark's Seminary High School and have degrees from Gannon and Dayton Universities. I started my banking career in 1976 as a, in Erie as a teller at Marine Bank, which is now PNC Bank. While I advanced my career at PNC, I was elected to serve on Erie City Council in 2006. After retiring from PNC as a regional manager in wealth management, I ran for mayor and began my four-year term in January of 2018. The city of Erie operates with a mayor-council form of government. A few of the mayor's responsibilities include to appoint city department heads and supervise their work enforce city ordinances, and submit an annual budget to city council. City's council's function are to review and approve the annual budget, establish tax rates, enter legal contracts, pass ordinances, and borrow funds. On today's panel, you will hear from one city council member, Ed Brzezinski, and one of my department heads, Kathy Rosdick, who is Erie's planning director. You will also hear from other local government members that manage services impacting your day-to-day -day lives, such as public safety, parking, water, roads, and much more. I'd like to thank our panel for taking the time to share their stories with you. I hope you learn a lot, and I wish you all well as you continue your academic year. You are the future of Erie. Thank you, Mayor Schumber. Hello, my name is Sheila Starrett and I am the Western PA Director for Senator Pat Toomey. Today's Youth Civic Engagement Symposium will focus on the importance of local government. Erie County has 38 local municipalities, including two cities, which are Quarry and the City of Erie, 14 boroughs and 22 townships. Those local municipalities vary greatly on their size, land mass, and total population. Local government can be structured in several different forms depending on their type. They may have an elected or appointed mayor, a council, supervisor, commissioners, or even a business manager. All of these various positions make up important decisions about the day-to-day -day functions of your local government. Local government are concerns with matters closest to your home, such as building regulations, development, public health, local roads, parks, play activities, libraries, environmental issues, and waste disposal. And there's also many other community service activities your local government gets involved in. Today we have four um, people within the Erie municipalities that work every day about making a better place for you to live. At this point, I'd like to have our panels introduce themselves. First, Dean Pepicello. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, my name is Dean Pepicello. I am a Harbor Creek Township Supervisor. Uh, Harbor Creek Township is the third largest municipality in Erie County, um, uh, population-wise, after the city uh, and Mill Creek with about 17,000 people. Uh, we run the day-to-day -day operations as supervisors of municipal government. Everything, as Sheila said, from roads to parks to zoning, code enforcement, uh, garbage and recycling. Uh, we're responsible for public safety, so fire, uh, EMS, uh, police, uh, all of those things, stormwater, sewer and water. So all of those things that you, that you think of every day in municipal government is, is what we do as township supervisors. Okay, thank you. And next we have city council member, Ed Brzezinski. Hello, uh, Ed Brzezinski, I have a lifetime educator. I uh, serve on city council right now. And our biggest job and our only real job is the budget. Uh, we depend on Mayor Schember and his folks up on the fifth floor to bring us down solid programs to make the city a better place. And of course, we are the checks and balances. We have to make sure that the money's there uh, in the proper way. And it's always been the same thing. For years, uh, the revenue has always been below the expenditures. 
So we're always fighting a battle. It seems like it's a losing battle, but with Lerda and a lot of things that we are doing now, it's uh, looking brighter. Thank you. And Casey Wells? Hello, my name is Casey Wells. I'm the executive director for the Erie County Convention Center Authority. We're responsible for the oversight and management of Erie's four major public assembly facilities, including uh, the Erie Insurance Arena, uh, 9,000 seat venue, home of the Erie Otters, uh, UPMC Park, a 6,000 seat uh, ballpark, home of the Erie Seawolves, um, the 2,300 seat Warner Theater, home of the Erie Philharmonic and the Erie Broadway series. And we also own and operate uh, the Bayfront Convention Center, 155,000 square foot convention center space on Erie's magnificent Bayfront. The authority also owns, but does not actively manage the two hotels connected to the convention center complex, uh, being the uh, Sheraton Hotel, as well as the, uh, the Courtyard Hotel. Um, we employ about uh, 750 people overall and provide uh, various uh, varied and diverse programming, uh, including sports, cultural, and arts offerings to, uh, to the region. Thank you. And Kathy Rosdeck. Hi, my name is Kathy Rosdick. I'm the Director of Planning and Neighborhood Resources for the City of Erie. My role with the city, I take on, um, I wear many hats. Uh, primary role is working on plans that will help the city achieve its goals, so helping them set their goals and then helping them achieve those goals. A lot of those plans um, were just recently completed. Erie Refocused is the comprehensive plan that looks at how we strengthen our neighborhoods and eradicate blight. We have a bike ped plan called Active Erie that looks at trans transportation and bike networks throughout the city. I also manage the, uh, the services of code enforcement, building inspection, uh, zoning, land development, and that's all part and parcel of, of my role with the city of Erie. Okay, great, thank you. And our first question will go to Supervisor Pepisalo. You are an elected township supervisor. What does a supervisor do? Well, uh, quite a few things that we'll uh, try to jam into a minute or so, but all the things that I listed before. So the roads you travel on, uh, at least local roads, are, are built, uh, maintained, plowed by uh, township officials. We're in charge of all of these things. That doesn't mean we do them all individually, but uh, roads, parks, code enforcement, zoning, um, all the things that we've listed, really that Kathy listed, that, that many municipalities deal with, we're dealing with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So ultimately, we're in charge of the governance of all of those things. Again, when you talk about sewer and water and parks and roads and zoning and code enforcement, even police, uh, firefighting, EMS, all of those things, ultimately Ultimately, we are responsible for the really the ultimate governance of those things and the day-to-day -day operations of them. Great. And what types of positions do you hire at the township? And do you need a college degree if you're going to be looking into those positions? Well, municipal governments, it, it, it's rare, it's varied, because there, there are really two major compartments to it. The first one is what people see, the things that we've talked about that I guess traditionally we call blue collar in nature. So road crew workers, uh, typically those individuals have a CDL, a commercial driver's license. Um, certainly they do work. Uh, parks, uh, operating of machinery, uh, those types of things are, are the jobs that you think of uh, out on the road crew and doing those types of things. So in addition to that, there's also the office. So we're, we're collecting taxes, we're dealing with zoning, we have uh, people in management, uh, people in code enforcement, uh, people in IT, uh, more of, I guess, of a, of a white collar uh, feel, as, as you might say it uh, as a layman's term. Um, most do not typically require um, college degrees, they probably do require some bit of, of post high school secondary education, whether it's training to be a mechanic, uh, so many jobs in those fields today, whether it's your, your CDL license, uh, as I discussed, whether it's an equipment operator, uh, all of those things. Uh, and then the office, you see some accounting degrees, some management degrees, uh, IT degrees, but typically most of the jobs in, in municipal government um, don't necessarily require a college degree, although they might require some sort of post, uh, post high school education. Okay, great. And um, just what makes um, Harbor Creek Township stand out versus other townships in Erie County? Well, I think that Harbor Creek Township, we're the third largest, but we're very unique in that we offer something for everyone. 
So the township has a fairly thriving commercial district on Route 20. We have interchanges um, at I-90 um, for growth. We have, at the same time, we have farming, grapes, we have open space, um, very good suburban life, neighborhoods for, for all kinds of folks. Um, so I think that our, our slogan is that we offer something for everyone. I think Harbor Creek does that. Um, we've designed, we've planned um, for that going forward and, and hope that we continue to do that uh, in the future. But ultimately, we're a little bit of something for everyone. Great, thank you. And Councilman, you are currently a city council mem member and you have been a school board member in the past. Um, both are elected po positions. What made you run for those offices and what are the major differences between those two positions? Uh, very simply, uh, I was brought up to look at situations and decide if you want to be part of the solution or part of the problem. Today we have a whole lot of people on the outside looking in, solving every problem that we have without knowing the basics behind it. Uh, I chose the other way. I chose to try to be part of the solution. Only by knowing all the things that we have to consider when we're doing something can we actively uh, be a positive part. And so many good things are happening in our city now. If you're talking about State Street, the Bayfront, you name it, uh, the parks, the bikeways, uh, so many things that are exciting for all the people. And as a city council person, you are part of the legislative branch of the government. What are some of the more important duties of a city council person? And maybe give us an example of how you interact with other departments within the city hall. That's an easy one. Uh, our main job is the budget. We control the purse strings. Uh, we evaluate what the mayor and his staff brings to us, uh, and we work forward on that. Uh, a second big component of what we do besides the budget is listening to the folks out there. Uh, the nice thing about our city is that we listen to our people. Uh, we can't always get a solution, you know, a snap of your fingers, but people are made aware. If there's complaints that the police department has to hear, I call the chief and I talk to the chief. If it's uh, garbage collection, you name it, uh, the folks work together pretty hard. You know, we're doing so much more with so much less. And in the coming days now, when we have the COVID money and uh, all these things, we still have to sit down with the mayor and his staff and uh, see the best way for that money to be spent. Okay. And what would you say that you like most about being an elected official? <laughs> uh, all people coming up to you at all hours, any place that you're at, uh, having a problem. Sometimes it's, you know, I missed uh, Torvalds' home run the other night because some nice lady came up and uh, just wanted to tell me about something. <laughs> so we take that, and it's, it's a wonderful thing because that means there are people in our city who care. And that's basically why I'm there. It's uh, never get rich on it, that's for sure. But it, uh, it's a lot of fun, and uh, just walking in our city makes, makes me feel good. Okay, great, thank you. And Casey Wells, your position is a little bit different because you are actually employed by a municipal authority. Can you give us a little bit more detail about exactly what the authority does and why it was created? Um, the Convention Center Authority, like many authorities, are created uh, by government, uh, typically by statute. Uh, we're an instrumentality of the Commonwealth, a legal governmental entity that are generally created to fulfill a specific purpose in the community. In Erie's case, there's an airport authority that, uh, that takes care of the airport and the uh, transportation needs relative to aviation. Um, certainly the water authority focuses on uh, you know, the water system, maintenance, expansion, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the transportation authority uh, focuses on uh, public transportation within our region. And the convention center authority uh, was created to uh, administer to the public events facilities in our community to promote tourism, recreation, uh, improve the quality of life, and to bring events into our community um, that generate uh, spending um, and uh, make Erie ultimately a nice place to live, uh, work, and play. I work for an 11-member board of directors. Um, they are appointed, seven are appointed by each county council person, ensuring that there is a uh, geographic representation of uh, board members throughout Erie County. Two are appointed by the mayor of Erie and two by the governor of Pennsylvania. 
Uh, my board members serve four-year terms without compensation. They're staggered terms, so there isn't any wholesale change uh, on, the th on the authority at any one given time. Uh, and they provide the vision and direction uh, for the authority, and I, as their executive director, implement that vision. Um, it's, uh, it's a, it allows, authorities allow uh, in instruments of government like us to focus on specific areas of concern for the betterment of the community. Um, it, uh, authorities provide a level of uh, uh, insulation, if you will, from the political winds that may be blowing uh, from one direction or another over time to allow us to uh, prepare for and implement ultimately um, more um, transformational change and or strategic initiatives that wouldn't necessarily be able to be achieved within um, any political term of an elected official. Um, it's kind of a hybrid. We, we, we have to subscribe to a lot of, uh, uh, obviously, public procurement uh, regulations, rules, et cetera. But there's a, a bit more of autonomy, which allows us to be a little more flexible and uh, ultimately to meet the needs uh, of our region. And um, for the young students that are watching this, is there an opportunity for them for job placement or volunteers within the authority? Um, we uh, require anyone working uh, with us to be 18 years of, of age, um, but there is certainly opportunities within a number of the uh, uh, tenant organizations, the Erie Seawolves, the Erie Otters, uh, and uh, some of the cultural organizations do provide for internships, et cetera. Um, we do internships as well. Uh, provided you're 18 years old or older, um, but uh, yes, there is there is some of that. Uh, there are some of those opportunities available. Okay, great, thank you. And Kathy Rosdeck, your educational background and career in planning has taken you to West Virginia, Michigan, and now back to now to Erie, PA. What does a planner do, and what kind of education did you need to become a planner? Well, planners can work in many different areas, and they can be they can work in both the public and the private sector. So, a planner uh, like the with like I am with the city of Erie, that's considered a public sector planner. They can work for <coughs> cities, municipalities, counties, even state uh, authorities, and things like that. Private sector planners are typically um, they're consultants who work with those different entities. They can work with downtown business improvement districts and in specific areas of, of improvement like that. Um, they can also work with universities on campus planning and other institutions who have a sort of a large geographic area and help those institutions plan uh, where the next building is, is built and where the next program is onboarded. Education uh, also is varied. Uh, uh, you certainly need a post-secondary degree, a bachelor's degree in your area of, of interest. Uh, geography is, is a typical area, so is architecture, urban design, uh, political science, public administration. And then once you really determine where you, where you want to work, um, it's always best to go back and get a master's degree specifically in planning. And that's either regional planning, rural development, uh, or specific urban planning like I have. And now that you have worked in the region for a few years, what do you think are some of the more promising opportunities for the Erie area? Uh, a few years ago when I first came to Erie, I was really uh, impressed with the assets that this community provides. It has a wonderful historical, uh, historical buildings, mostly in their downtown. Um, it's a very, uh, it's an easy city to get around in. We actually heard that when we talked to our new Americans and our refugees and immigrants who come from other countries, usually larger cities. They uh, overwhelmingly say, uh, tell us that it's really easy to get from place to place. And Erie really does provide everything you need from schools, parks, uh, community assets, festivals, education. It's really quite uh, a remarkable uh, opportunity for anyone who you know is looking for a small town feel, but have all of the big town amenities, and we can't we can't f uh, forego. I think one of our, our biggest assets, which is our water, we are the only we are the only county in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania who has a waterfront, is on Lake Erie, has uh, Presque Isle Bay. That is an incredible asset to this community um, that we need to continue to support and preserve uh, for generations to come. Great. And then in your current role as the City of Erie Director of Planning and Neighborhood Resources, how have you worked with residents and what impact has that had on you 
and you onto the community. One of the things that I didn't mention was um, once you become a planner, um, it's always good to get there. There is a certification process. Uh, it's called AICP, and I am a certified planner. One of I follow the code of ethics very closely. It's important to do that. Uh, one of those responsibilities is to the public, and I hold that one very dear. What that means is you have a seat at the table in decision making uh, purposes as a planner. And one of, your, one of your responsibilities is to make sure that people who don't typically have a voice at that table get a voice at that table. So that takes a lot of listening, talking to people where they live, uh, listening to the issues and bringing them back to the decision makers and making sure we're, make, we're making those decisions based on the needs of the entire community. Okay, great. And then the next question is gonna be for the entire panel. You took on respective roles with a certain amount of preparation and awareness about what you were getting into. What is something you have had to face that you didn't expect, and what best prepared you to handle that? Dean, would you like to go first? Sure, I'll go first. Um, I think to kind of piggyback on what, what Ed said, we, we work for no one, as elected officials, uh, for no one and yet everyone at the same time. So in Harbor Creek, I have 17,000 bosses, uh, it seems, every day. So I think that, that is one, and, and the other thing is, you know, at, at the same time, it, it's like Ed said, you, you're really never off the clock in these jobs, and, and you sign up for it, but I think it was something that was, that was unexpected. Most conversations occur with people outside the office, outside normal work hours, and it always starts with, listen, I know you're not working, but, um, but they have, you know, a really important question and a conversation they wanna have, and we work for them. So I think we're, none of us would say by any means that we're famous, but we're just known well enough. People know who we are and what we're responsible for and that we do work for them. So I think having to, having to adapt to that, knowing, knowing that you work 24 seven, there's nothing that can prepare you for it. I think you just have to go through it and you have to understand that it's very important to what you do. Ed? What he said, <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty, pretty good job, Dean. Uh, I, I'm a little, older than most people around city government. I was on city council back in 1988, and it was a whole different ball game than it is today. Uh, unfortunately, some of the people on our council think they work for the fifth floor instead of watching the fifth floor. So we, we have a little bit of a problem with that because we can't get a clear view of things that are happening. But we have a good, strong council. Uh, I always say we have two ears and one mouth. That's because we should listen to twice as much as we say. And that being said, I think that that's the fun part. Like Dean said, you walk down the street and uh, people see you as a problem solver. We hopefully can do that. Many times, all we have to do is give them an ear and they're happy. And that's, I guess that's why I'm there too. Thank you. Casey? Yeah, we have uh, nearly 800,000 people that attend our facilities on an annual basis. And it's obviously impossible to prepare for what may happen given that there's nearly 800,000 people in your house um, uh, annually. But I guess the way you prepare for those things, and I'll, I'll, we'll share an instance that we had a, uh, a fire that uh, started backstage in one of the dressing rooms at a Broadway show from, uh, from uh, someone who was burning incense in their dressing room and caught the clothing on fire and it continued to smolder and ultimately uh, engage the, the dressing room. Fortunately, it was very quickly um, uh, knocked down by a, a, a sprinkler system, but you know, we had to do a full-blown evacuation of the theater from a sold-out show in the middle, middle of winter. And um, you, know, it's, you, you, you can prepare for that, and we do prepare for that, and that's why it went so smoothly, is that uh, you've got to have established policies, procedures, and protocols, and you have to train them with regularity. You have to make it uh, uh, think of all those things that uh, you'd never want to happen and assume they do and go through tabletop exercises, go through drills and training so it's instinctive and intuitive as to what to do in a, in a moment of emergency. Um, and you've got to have great staff that are able to uh, understand their roles and to perform them and ex execute them uh, uh, to the level necessary to keep uh, you know, our performers, our, our employees, and our patrons safe. Um, so I guess the, the overall answer is, you know, do your homework, uh, prepare for the worst and hope for the best, and, uh, and trust me, in time, uh, that preparation will serve you well. Kathy? 
Well, when I was hired for the, at the city of Erie, I was the very first planner that the city had had ever. And that was a, something that I took on as a professional challenge. I was really fascinated about what that might look like. Other communities that I've worked for or with um, had planning departments, so it was really easy to kind of come in and already work that system in, within that system. But this was very different. Uh, what I knew was that it was going to be a challenge, and, but I had no idea what I was really up for. Um, and uh, I had thought that I would just sort of get into it and really work uh, plans and ideas and work with the community uh, and spend most of my time doing that. And what I realized is I had to uh, do more education with the departments in City Hall to see that planning isn't separate from what they do. It's actually there to help them um, do their work easier and, and have more of an impact on the community. Um, so what I, I did when I kept getting the door slammed in my face on, on thinking uh, with new ideas and trying to be creative is, is I had to put my ego aside that I had been doing this work for, for decades, put it aside and, say, and just kind of go at it in many different ways. So if it's a good idea, if it's worth keeping on the table, if it's worth moving forward, think of ways that you can talk and educate others to make sure that it is uh, uh, embraced by everyone, but that was probably the hardest. The culture change in City Hall was one I did not expect and, and kind of had to go to, through it with a completely different outlook. Okay, great. And um, when you look back um, on, on your life, what advice would you have for students if they are interested in running for office, working for the government, volunteering in their community? Dean? Well, uh, I think first and foremost, uh, elected positions um, probably make up 10% or less of all the government jobs that exist anywhere. So you don't have to be elected um, to have a government related job. That, that's number one. But I think most important is to just find something you really, really like. Whether you're volunteering, whether you're elected, um, there are just, there are so many facets of government, as we said, all the way from sewers to certainly management positions and, and everything in between. I think there's something for everyone. If you've never considered government, certainly local government as a career, the opportunities are boundless for anyone. But most importantly, at the end of the day, I think, find something you really like, um, choose that for your career, the, the money, the success, everything else will come after that. Okay, great. Ed? I, once again, uh, you either are part of the problem or part of the solution. Uh, it's kind of sad when you see how many people come out to vote. What do we have, 22% last time case? I don't even remember. It was very low. One fifth of our population is making decisions for everybody's future. Uh, that's why involvement is so, so important. I mean, I could sit on the back porch and watch the trees grow if I wanted to, but being involved and uh, wanting to make a difference with the plans that Kathy mentioned, she's brought a whole new concept to city government that wasn't there for a long time. And the doors probably did slam shut. Uh, I'm happy to help open some of those. Thank you. Casey? Um, it may seem to students that what you're being taught doesn't apply. Um, it does. Uh, knowledge is power, in a sense. And the exercise of learning and assimilating information is, is always valuable. Um, I'll dovetail with what, what Dean mentioned, but you know, find what you like. Um, it's easy, it's so much easier to be very good at what you enjoy. Um, work doesn't seem as much like work. Um, and as Dean mentioned, uh, the money uh, and the gratification and the self-fulfillment will certainly follow. I would advise uh, to all of the students out there um, learn to read and learn to write. That sounds so trite, but it's amazing how many people cannot put their thoughts to paper in a very concise, informative, and in a way that's being readily understood by the reader. Um, I think you become a good writer by being a good reader. So it's gonna sound, I'm gonna sound like perhaps many of your educators and teachers, but, but all of that stuff is tremendously important. You may not realize it now, but <clears throat> as you, as you, uh, go through your career path, you will see how, uh, how, important, uh, how important that is to, uh, to success. Um, I remember when I was a student, um, both grade school, high school, and in college, I couldn't understand why 
they're teaching me this, I'll never use it against him again in my life, but it really teaches you how to learn. It trains your, your mind like a muscle, like uh, you know, if you lift weights every day, your muscles are gonna get toned and strong and be able to perform. Um, I offer that the brain's much the same. Um, you exercise your brain, it's gonna be much more able to um, fulfill the requirements of positions, and, uh, and if you can have fun doing it, uh, it's, it's not like work at all. And Kathy, what advice would you have for students? Uh, particularly in the planning field, one thing that you have to remember is you've got, you have to be creative, um, tenacious, and patient. Um, so things take, uh, when I was first starting out, I was very energetic, I wanted to get things done, I wanted to see it happen on the ground very quickly. And as many, I think everyone sitting up here and talking about this today knows that it doesn't happen overnight. The wheels of government turn slowly, uh, but they do turn. And so I would say hold, uh, hold on to your ideas and your ideals. And if it's, if it's worth doing, stick to it and make sure that you get the job done. But you have to be patient. What I, I always tell young professionals is what you think is going to take a year will take you three years. What, will take you, what you think is three years will take you five years. So be patient. Do the work. Also, education is really very uh, critical to the work of a planner and the work in government. Always look for the next training opportunity, the next, the next opportunity to network with other communities, learn what they're doing, uh, do your research. I'm, I am a very avid uh, reader. I, I look at what other communities are doing across the nation, across the world. Um, even though you might th not think they apply to Erie, they almost always do. There's always something in there. And I would also agree um, that reading and writing is critical. Mo a lot of the work that I do isn't just the big picture, fun, think of a really visionary idea. Um, you have to make that happen. And the way you make that happen is usually through policy work. So you always have to write the policies and programs that I'm sending to Councilman Brzezinski to, uh, to review and vetting with the administration. It always takes, you have to be able to take your idea and, and sell it to the people who are gonna pass the legislation, to the residents who are gonna be impacted by it. And so you, you have to ha be very good at writing, uh, read as much as you can, and then, uh, of course, your oral presentation. Be, you have to be a good public speaker because you're asked, uh, you're asked uh, to, to talk a lot, like we are today. Um, so those are things that are, that are very important. Um, but also, finally, be a good listener. A lot of people say they're listening. Oh, it's like, oh, well, we talk to people. We well, don't talk to them. Listen and be an active listener. So really deep down, try to figure out what are they telling you? What are their challenges? Why do those challenges exist? And what can you do to help solve those problems? OK, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, for sitting on today's panel. Um, I think the students are walking away with a better understanding of what local government does. Thank you for your time, but most importantly, thank you for your commitment to your local communities and the efforts you do to make Erie County a better place for us to live and thrive. Thank you.